Hello everyone. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a simple no fuss fish curry. It's a South Indian version that I've always uh, made. Uh, it's a go-to recipe that is passed down from my grandmother. Uh, of course my grandma did a little uh, different because she ground everything. Uh, her masalas all in a little, uh, what do you call it, ami. They call it an ami, not a grinder. Uh, so she would pound it all and grind it uh, by hand and uh, today I'm going to teach you how to make a tilapia uh, fish curry. Uh, this is the frozen one that I use from Costco. It says farm raised but without antibiotics and this is handy uh, because it stays in the freezer and I can pull out whenever I need and it's been uh, a great uh, fish uh, for uh, Indian fish curry. You could use salmon, you can use uh, snapper, anything for this uh, recipe. Pretty much it's your choice of what fish you like. But I'm making with tilapia alliance, uh, alliance today. Um, so our basic ingredient is onion, garlic, tomatoes. Uh, I have actually soaked some raw tamarind from... I mean, I always prefer to soak and uh, do my fish curries. I don't like to use the paste or any other concoction because it comes with preservatives at the same time uh, it makes the whole curry look dark and uh, not so appealing uh, so the best route to go is use fresh raw tamarind that you soak pre-soak and extract it out right now i have almost a big lemon sized one if i have extra i may make some rasam as well so our green ingredients are all in this platter. I have some cilantro for garnish at the end. I have two green uh, serrano peppers. These are pretty long, so I just limited to two. If you have small ones, uh, you know, based on the spiciness of your chili pepper, use according to your need. And then curry leaves. Don't miss this. This adds a great nutty flavor to your entire dish. And there's no Indian uh, curry that is made without it, okay? Always have a plant in your backyard or uh, you know, just keep a good supply of it, okay? And these are the farm-raised uh, tilapia lions that I have that I'm going to uh, thaw it out and cut it into small uh, two-inch, uh, you know, maybe two-inch, yeah, two-inch pieces. And then I'm going to make the curry. And these are my seasonings. Usually there's mustard seeds here, but I've never had a chance to go shop for it. So today we're going to skip that. But I will use fenugreek, some cumin seeds, and uh, for, for this curry, just those two seasonings. And of course, mustard seeds if you have some. And then I will be using turmeric powder. This is my dhania powder or the coriander powder. And some red chilies. This is cashmere red chili pepper uh, powder. And this is cayenne pepper. You see the color difference. Uh, this is way too bright. So I may use one teaspoon and uh, then switch to this one the cayenne pepper powder just for color it makes your gravy look great uh, this is a little milder than the cayenne so just so you know and dhania powder it's always one is to three so one chili powder means three of dhania powder okay so let's get started first i'm going to thaw my fish and cut it into pieces and keep it aside and then chop my onions saute it along with the garlic and curry leaves and uh, green chilies and later we will add our tomatoes and our powders and then our extract and uh, add the fish and then garnish with the cilantro in the end and always make sure to use sesame oil I have idiom sesame oil right now and I use a squeegee bottle this is a jalebi making bottle that I find it very convenient to you know pour in my oil and it's good if I'm using this oil for dosa or anything you know it's easy to squirt instead of spooning it so I find that very convenient and of course add salt to your taste okay let's get started so my onion is chopped and my garlic is uh, kind of sliced those which were big I just sliced them up and my green chili pepper, I just coat it on the top a little bit. You want the entire chili intact. And I re realized I may have more onion, so I took half and reserved it for a different recipe. My tilapia lions are soaking in water. 
once they thaw I'm going to cut it by the time my curry is ready that should be ready to go I will chop up my tomatoes uh, when my cutting board gets free so right now we have uh, onion one and a half onion one sprig of curry leaves I prefer to add them with the onion instead of in the beginning with the seasonings because sometimes they tend to get burnt uh, very quickly and then uh, these will go first and then we will step ahead with the uh, you know other ingredients but for now my pan has been heating I'm going to add some oil about uh, roughly two to four tablespoons depending on how uh, you know fancy you want because the oil will float on the top and look very pretty but health wise I don't know how advisable it is but let's just go ahead add our fenugreek seeds about uh, half, you know a quarter teaspoon would do and then remember we are missing mustard seeds usually I add mustard seeds let it splutter and then we'll add fenugreek so a quarter teaspoon of fenugreek let it change color it will be a golden uh, brown and then we will add our cumin seeds followed by onion so it's almost browned up so we'll add our cumin seeds just same quantity so just add some flavor then we'll go ahead and add our onion the curry leaves this is a no cost recipe because there's no grinding absolutely and then we add our garlic and our green chilies I know they look long but believe me it will taste yummy in the long term so once these are sauteed it becomes translucent and a little brown slightly brown okay then you turn off no then you will add your tomatoes I just turned on my exhaust fan because it is starting to smoke away so your whole house doesn't get smelly so go ahead and turn on your fan and saute it till it grows this is a no first recipe no grinding uh, my grandma would always grind some coconut in the end along with some roasted uh, peppercorns, jeera and some mustard seeds. She will fry them, dry fry them and then pound it and add it in the end along with the coconut, brown coconut. But uh, this I kind of feel is a version which is kind of a shortcut because I didn't want to grind anything and make it simple for you all. And uh, right now my onions are nice and sweated and wilted. And it's turned color. I'm going to go ahead and add a quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder and about a heaping spoonful of dhania powder. And this is a smaller spoon, so I'm going to add double the quantity. So six of this, which is equal to about three teaspoons. Okay, a little bit more and then some Kashmiri red chili powder and some cayenne and remember our green chilies are there these are long so I'm going to let in a little bit of the cayenne and I forgot to mention we do need some cumin powder as well a little bit nothing to overpower like a quarter teaspoon uh, it adds flavor but you don't want it overpowering so I usually add my masalas to the onion itself uh, so the raw smell goes out quickly then once this is all good and sauteed I will add my raw tomatoes that I've chopped up and ready to go so this is just a method that I figured out with my experience that you can do this so I will add my tomatoes at this point chop them you can grind them and make a puree and add as well that will make your life easier but today I didn't want to use my grinder or a mixer. So here it is. Mix it all up. Add a little bit of salt and a little bit of water. If your pan is starting to smoke with the masala, you don't want the masala to burn. But right now it's doing its happy thing. I'm going to add some salt. About a teaspoon. I know I don't measure I'm like my grandma when you come to a particular stage in life you just eyeball it but I will put the measurements in the description box so don't worry 
So mix it well. Add some water if you think your masala sauce burning. Okay. I went ahead and added like half a cup of water and uh, my gravy is coming along very well. Wait till all the tomatoes are nice and mushy and uh, forms a nice uh, uh, you know gravy and then we'll go ahead and add our tamarind extract. So my gravy has been simmering away. So beautiful. We'll just garnish with our curry leaves and cilantro and switch off the stove and put the lid back on and let it just sit in that heat for two three minutes and then it's ready to serve with your hot rice or idli or dosa and fish curry always tastes best the next day after okay you could do that or just it's ready to eat right away thanks for watching